Hi everyone, welcome to Spirit Coffee Talk. I am Jeanette Byro, and joining me is Lisa Richman and Elise Cathery. We are all mediums and channelers and we are a part of Avalon Spirit and we're bringing this to you once a week where we just connect in with spirit to see what's going on in the world and the energies. And so in today's episode, we talked about the energies of the moon. We talked about the energies moving from May into the eye of the storm right now, then moving into June and how self-care has a big effect on how we move through these energies. So I hope you enjoy the show. Please do like and subscribe. And if you have any comments or ideas for topics, do put them below and we are happy to jump on it. I hope you enjoy. Right, and welcome everyone to Coffee Talk with Spirit. I am Jeanette Byro. I am a medium and a channeler. And we have Lisa Richman here, who is a medium and a channeler as well. And also Elise Cathery, who is a medium and a channeler. And we are the mediums and channelers of Avalon Spirit. And we are sitting here today having coffee with Spirit and talking about the the things that are going on in the world and the energies in the spirit world this last week. And we really wanted to start with uh, the moon. We had a really powerful full moon, super blood moon lunar eclipse. And basically the super blood moon is just the way in which the light hits the sun and moves through the atmosphere and hits the moon creates this kind of red effect. And a long time ago, that effect was considered like a negative omen. But really, um, this moon was all about like completions and closing karmas and putting things to rest and kind of moving on. And so I don't know about you guys, but the moon was really intense for me, especially the buildup to it was super intense. How did you guys mm -hmm. feel? Yeah, I found the buildup intense as well. And then it kind of just like, it was, it was a sl not slow, but like a steady incline throughout the week. And then Thursday, yesterday, it's like, I felt everything just kind of like hit the ground. And I was very much in like physically in my relationships, in myself, experiencing all of that buildup. It was like thinking about it, feeling it, it's growing, it's building. And then it like dropped and I was in the muck of having to work through whatever was being cleared. Mm -hmm. Interesting. How about you, Lisa? Um, yeah, I, I feel like the buildup was definitely um, more intense for, for me and my family. Um, I, I experienced a lot of um, insomnia and I felt like my baby didn't sleep either. So we didn't sleep for a couple of days leading up in the full moon. Uh, but then instead of a, like a drop for me personally, I felt more like I finally felt like it was a little bit like the, the clouds parted a bit, sunshine came through. So I felt some more lightness. Um, the kind of vibe in my house is a little bit more light, but also quite intense with things coming to an end. It was like the build up, the build up. Things were coming forward for all of us to look at and coming up for us to reevaluate and see. And then it was like we made decisions or did clearing or like called things right as they were and kind of made peace with things in more of an abrupt way versus having to talk a ton of things through. It was just like things kind of came right up face to face and then it's like clouds parted. So I definitely feel a lot better. I feel like mm -hmm. a lightness for the first time in a while. So that's good. Yeah, that is really good. And you know, I found that um, the energy was so intense and in that it really like it's wrapping up all of that energy from May because we talked about it last week, which I posted on my podcast, right? When we had our conversation and we talked about the crazy energy of May and how it brought up a whole bunch of stuff and it really touched on mental health and how we handle the stuff and how we think about the stuff and how we deal with the stuff. Um, and the moon, I felt like was this like huge ringing bell that was like, it's all here, like dinner time, everything's on the table, right? All of our stuff was on the table. And so for some, it's like looking at all the stuff was like, oh my God, like it just was like, oh, it's a lot. And for others, um, I think it was like dealing with all the things on the table. And for me, I felt like I was like, 
I looked at the table. I'm like, all right. And I took a big, strong arm and I went whoosh (laughs) and knocked everything off the table. And I was like, okay, clean slate, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm purposely stepping into June with a clean slate and allowed whatever pieces to come up. Kind of like you were saying, Lisa, to close some karmas, close some things, like really tie them up and check if there was anything else that was needed and then kind of put them to rest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was it for me. But um, how did you guys feel that, uh, do you feel like that has closed for you guys, all of it? Or do you still feel that there's some remnants of that energy that's going to lead into June? For me, I feel like, mm, I think it's a mix. So for certain things, um, for certain things, I really felt like, yeah, there was some, some karmas and, and closures and completions that happened. Um, and Lisa, what you were saying about like conversations or things would just kind of come up all of a sudden. I very much felt that yesterday as well. Like this, I was having conversations and things and stuff that I didn't even really realize needed to be talked about certain realizations that I had about some of my experiences or just, uh, maybe things that I felt, um, came up. And so some of them I felt like, yeah, okay, check, check, check. And then others, I feel like they came up and it's like, okay, the karma and the, maybe the cycle of it or the energy behind it is completed. And yet the human self still has some unraveling to do, um, and some shifting and sifting through things, um, as I go forward, because I feel like, I feel like June is going to bring a lot and we need to feel really grounded in that. And so for me, it's like, those two things are kind of intertwined. Um, Mm -hmm. How are you feeling physically at least? Tired. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like, it's almost like the, after the storm a bit. Hey, I know that's how I feel too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now here's a question. Here's an intuitive question for the two of you. Do you think that storm has hit? Or do you think there is more stormy parts to come? Like May was a lot, but do you feel intuitively that June is going to bring up a lot more, like more pieces, more events, more happenings, or does June kind of roll itself out a little bit? I have a really kind of interesting answer to that. What they showed me was it depends on the choices that you make, like we were talking Mm -hmm. about. And so no matter what, the storm is going to come, but it's, how are you going to view it? Are you going to be in it? Are you going to be in the eye? Because if you're in the eye of the storm, you can very much stay grounded and calm while Mm -hmm. things are spinning. Right. But it depends. And, and I think it's not as simple as one or the other. You can kind of go back and forth and then feel the turbulence, but then come back into your grounding. But um, I think right now the like in between of like the May energy and the June storm i think we're kind of sitting in the in the middle right now and we're starting to make choices of how we want to approach this do we want Mm -hmm. to be in the like grounding part do we want to use our tools and like sit in the middle to understand it and not get swept away with it or are we going to kind of take up old patterns or old programming to that brings us and sweeps us into the storm does that make sense Mm -hmm. I also got eye of the storm analogy um, from the same perspective and a little bit different too in that I get the sense we're in that eye right now. And it's like, now is the time to rest and to like recharge and to do that work and make those decisions about how we want to move forward through the rest of the storm or the the other side of things. Mm -hmm. Um, But using that kind of floating in the sunny middle part where everything is calm to like recharge and uh, Mm -hmm. add a little bit in rest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think that makes a lot of sense. And you know, um, the way that I've been seeing it too, and I love this idea of the eye of the storm, because to me, that just fits perfectly. And being in that position of the eye of the storm, it's kind of like, if you're walking in this direction, is you look at what's behind you, and like, leave what's behind you behind you. Don't let the whirling energies around you bring some of those things that are no longer needed and clearly, clearly not needed back into your path. Leave Mm. them behind. So you can walk into this next phase of the storm, um, you know, better prepared with more gear, with more awareness and less baggage. Mm -hmm. Right. So for those that felt like a lot of baggage or triggers or 
karma, whatever you want to call it, came up. It's like, take this time in the eye and like part ways with the things of the past. I think that's a huge one. Whatever those things are, like big, little, whatever they are. You know what? And, And understand that that can be a bit of a process too, right? Like if, like, I love this. I love that you're saying this because I, I know a lot of people and myself included what we're, we're experiencing just that leaving the past in the past saying like, I no longer want to bring this luggage with me, but in all humanness, there's times that we get confronted with, Oh my goodness. Even though I know that past, that part of my past is what I want to leave behind. It doesn't feel completely safe to completely leave it yet. And so like old programming will, bring us into a place of trying to go back and retrieve it because it feels a bit safe. It's Mm -hmm. like, Oh, I feel a bit vulnerable. I've let this, like, I usually react this way, or this is safe, even though I know it's not for my best good. And to just have a little bit of um, compassion for self and understanding that it's okay. If you go back and retrieve it a little bit, because it feels safe, you can, you can understand that. Why is that happening? Why are you going back to those behaviors or relationships or ways of being? Mm -hmm. It's because of this like long time of programming and it's okay. Acknowledge it. And then continue to try to leave it and go forward. You know, like Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we get a bit upset with ourselves when we go into past stuff. Do you know what I mean? Even though we know that we're past it, but it's okay. It's okay. Mm -hmm. If you, if you visit it a bit and say, Oh, I understand why I went back to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. hundred percent. And I feel like it happens from like a spiritual perspective. And then it also happens like from our very human, like physiological perspective, because if you look at our bodies in the way that beliefs and experiences like it's scientifically shown how all of that links to the way we show up in the world and it's hard mm-hmm. wired into us like biologically mm-hmm. and that's totally. something I, I struggle with um sometimes in the wellness world is this idea of like okay you've healed it move on and it's like well really our body just wants to be in the place that it knows so if it knows stress or past belief systems or you know difficult relationships or whatever it is it's gonna fight you to move back to that place because you're moving into unknown and that requires a little bit of back and forth and that overall process. So sometimes I I think it's like we, as a society forget, like there's our spiritual self that knows so much and our high self and can give us all the guidance in the world. And we can complete karmas and do all of that amazing energy work. And we still have a human body that has biology behind it that is trying to work with us in a different way too. So it's like holding space for both. And as you said, Lisa, like having that compassion and grace to, for ourselves to know, like, it's okay if we kind of oscillate back and forth um, and just paying attention that it's like, we were talking about last time that like upward cycling versus Mm -hmm. cycling down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's true, Elise, because I remember you've helped me several times when I'm moving through different things. um, And in the process of releasing it from my body, I didn't realize how much of um, an experience, both good and bad, right? But they leave an imprint on our bodies. And so when we're, I mean, the good ones leave a good imprint. We want to keep that. But the ones that left a really uh, troubled imprint, sometimes we don't realize that the mind has already decided like, yes, I've moved on with this or I've come to understanding or I learned lessons, great and whatever. But the body will have it within it. So I remember at least one time you were getting me to do these different yoga poses and I was trying to like bend at the hips or do these things. And I hated it. Like I absolutely hated it. I'm like, I'm sorry. I I appreciate this, but I hate it. And you're like, yes, that's your body telling you that there's stuff in there. And so when I took that understanding of why we were doing the certain movements or why my body wanted to fight when I had to hold a pose or something, um, it gave me insight as to where there was more healing or I mean, if we want to take the healing label off more awareness, Mm -hmm. right? Like my body was saying, Hey, come look at this Mm -hmm. instead of just ignoring it. I didn't realize how much the body played into it to that degree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was huge. Issues in the tissues. (laughs) Issues in the tissues. (laughs) Woo! I feel like that's a rap song. Issues in the tissues. Spiritual rap. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh boy that's great next week elisa is going to be doing a wrap for us on issues. <laughs> oh that's so good oh my gosh well 
So what else do you guys think is going on nowadays? Where are we headed now? What's next? What's spirit telling you is coming up next? I feel like I'm, I'm really, um, like recovering. <laughs> I'm still recovering. Yeah. And, and whether it's in the eye of the storm right now or preparing it, it's the same thing. I made a pact to myself that June was going to be self-care month. Mm. And, um, and that showed up a lot with saying yes, when you mean yes, and saying no, when you mean no, um, and taking care of my physical body, stopping and listening, moving my body in the way it, it wants, um, not coming down on myself or judging myself. If I take a couple steps back before you go for it, just like we were talking. And I mean, June hasn't started yet, except I've started. So like, I'm, I've already started and I'm already like, Oh, this is tough. <laughs> it's not even June 1st yet, but, uh, yeah, no, I think it's, I'm trying to really slow down and l- really listen to what I need spiritually, emotionally, physically, like we're talking about what my body needs and listening. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Well, Lisa, we lost your image. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> That's all good. All good. Yeah. You know what? You know what? And I think, um, I think that's a great challenge, actually. Why don't we put it out there to everybody, whoever wants to join, is to make June self-care month, Mm. right? Like, take all the experiences that came from May, all the things that surfaced, and then, like, self-care yourself through June to help balance out that, like, ratio of work to rest and recovery. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great idea, Mm -hmm. right? I was just given a little message about that. Jeanette. Yeah. So if, if people like join in and do the self-care month, let's say, okay. And we're trying to make the good, healthy choices and stuff. They're saying we're going to slip up here, there, ever, because there's no such thing as a perfect month, mm-hmm. but part of self-care month can look exactly like if you do take a step back or you say, you know, I don't want to have any wine for the entire month. And then you sit down and have a glass of wine with your girlfriends one night instead of beating yourself up about not following through self-care month can be a teacher on how to then have compassion for yourself and say, Hey, you got this. It's all good. Right. And that's actually a part of self-care is that compassion piece. That was, that just came through. So that's neat. What about you, Elise? Yeah, I really resonate with the idea of a self-care month. I think from twofold, one that, you know, the idea we were talking about before where we're kind of like in the eye right now and there might be more coming um, from a storm perspective. And so really utilizing the, the, the calm in the middle right now to facilitate mm-hmm. and build some of those habits back up again. So that when, cause I think sometimes what we do with self-care is it's like, we go to it when things are hard and then it's like, it feels even more impossible <laughs> to actually do the things. And then we start, you get in that cycle and then you're having a hard time and you, or you're maybe not, you know, having the glass of wine that you said you weren't going to, and then you're hard on yourself and it perpetuates that. So I think building that muscle up while we have some space is a really valuable uh, and timely thing. Mm-hmm. The other- building that muscle up. I like that. Yeah. So like it takes some practice. You got to build the muscle up of self-care. Mm-hmm. I like that. And That's if we good- go back to the conversation we were having before about like our biology, right? When times are tough, all we want to do is like cocoon and, you know, um, either fight or flight and sometimes freeze and just completely disconnect. So if we can kind of practice these things in that Mm. calmer space where we're not necessarily as triggered then I feel like it can be a little bit easier or it, you know you just feel that strength already connected to those self-care practices mm. I think for me too I'm seeing I'm feeling um and I'm seeing in Alberta and I think in PC as well and a lot of Canada and around the world there's a lot up in the air right now it's like when I look forward at the next six months I can try and plan certain things, but like, I, you know, from a logical life planning perspective, it's hard right now. And that everything up in the air can feel really uncertain. And so for me, and I, I think part of the self-care piece is really some sort of grounding practices, um, so whatever that is for you or me 
to like keep my feet on the ground. Cause while everything else is up in the air, I can work to try and keep my feet on the ground. And at least, mm-hmm. you know, as things play out, um, let's talk I about grounded. just for the people, like different people to hear and almost give them um, themselves the okay of self-care let's just be really vulnerable about the different things that we truly feel maybe right now or in general that is self-care to us and what we do mm-hmm. like without without having like because we can say self-care but I think sometimes it's tough for people to give themselves number one permission and that we might think of self-care as all just in a box of like going to the spa or getting a massage or taking a day off. That's all wonderful. But like, I think that we could open the door a little bit more because self-care can look like a a lifestyle versus actions. Mm -hmm. So do you guys want to like share what you guys feel intuitively and you're knowing about what your personal self-care looks like right now, what it would look like for this month? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go for it, Elise. You start. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Um, and I think self-care is a, is a widely used term that now sometimes I think people are like, yeah, you know, whatever self-care. Um, and it seems fluffy, but I think mm-hmm. it can be, it can be so simple and it can be so powerful. Um, especially when we have a certain intention behind it. Um, for me, I think one of the biggest things, no matter what I'm doing for self-care is, as I just said, my intention behind it because mm-hmm. I can have a bubble bath, but if I'm like scrolling social media during that bubble bath and it's stressing me out, well, then it's not really having the impact that I want it to. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, um, I think one of the big things is getting into nature. Um, I can feel a draw to that. And I, you know, that's often the case for me, but as spring comes up, I really feel that, that draw towards it. Um, something with the energy of like birth and new and fresh and mm. um, is really drawing me in. Um, journaling has been a really big practice and not necessarily really like, um, I'll say neat journaling, but like, like first I do a gratitude list and then I do a this and then I do a this, but like opening it up and just putting everything on paper, whatever I need to put on paper, I put it on paper. Um, another big one for me that I've struggled with, and I'm really going to try and embrace, I've more struggled with it consciously is, uh, sleeping more and allowing myself, like if I need to sleep in a little bit, allow myself to do that. Don't let my to-do list or the shoulds, um, dictate what my body needs. Cause those two things are not the same. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. what else is there? Movement, yoga, um, and really any sort of movement, like you were saying, Lisa, that intuitive movement, I think is the big thing for me. Um, because as a, you know, somebody who likes fitness or somebody who teaches yoga or somebody who does all these different things, we can kind of get in our own way about like, I should be doing yoga. Okay. Well, if that's not actually going to serve me, then I'm not, I shouldn't do it. I should do what feels good. Um, Mm -hmm. so really connecting in with my body and asking it, like, what does it mean? And the other thing, that I'll say about self-care for me is holding space to feel my emotions. It's been a really hard couple of years for a lot of us and the emotions have been a lot. And I think I'm getting to a place and I think a lot of people are getting to a place where we're like, it's too much, it's enough. Um, And a self-care practice for me is like really tuning into my body and allowing space to fully feel what I'm feeling, not being stuck in my head and like, thinking, thinking, thinking about it, but like, what does my body feel right now? I feel sad. Okay. Do I need to cry? It comes out or I feel a tightness in my chest or whatever it is. And just being with that for a little bit, and then maybe using journaling or another tool to express it or movement. Um, yeah. So that's, what's coming to mind for me, especially for June. Yeah. That's That's great. That's a lot of stuff and like a lot of applicable things for people to pull from. Um, I think for me, one of the biggest things, uh, without repeating what you said, because there's many things that you talked about that I do as well, but one of them was that I would think for me, like, I didn't realize I was doing this. And so I could tell somebody about self-care and explain different ways that they could do it and what they should do and what they should consider and all these shoulds. But then when I applied it to myself, what I didn't realize I was doing is I would allow myself one act of self-care. And that one act should be enough. 
Mm. And I didn't realize I was doing this. I wasn't consciously aware, but it was this program that was kind of running underneath. Like, well, I should feel better now because I had a nap. Mm -hmm. I had a 20 minute nap. I should be better. Right. Or I, um, you know, I had a bath last night, so I should be better this morning. I had a nice bubble bath with oils and candles and whatever. I should be all topped up this morning and better, not realizing that maybe I've been pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing for the last week and a half, not sleeping enough, not whatever. One bath is a great start, but it might need several days of things. And I learned this, like, I started to realize this the last couple months, but I, it was reinforced to me like a bright light this past weekend. Mm -hmm. And the reason why was because it was my birthday on Tuesday, but what we did, it just kind of how it worked out was that Saturday, I did something just my daughter and I for my birthday. Sunday, I did something just my son and I. Um, then I had like some birthday dinners in there and with some of my parents and it ended up being a weekend of birthday stuff, but it wasn't jam packed. And what was really awesome is that my husband was like, what do you want to do? Take the time you need, take the time. And I suddenly had all this time to choose what I wanted over a series of days. And I wasn't rushing to fit in a self-care practice with fun time, with a birthday dinner, with this and get it all done and do all the things and think that I should feel better, mm -hmm. right? Or I should feel full up. Instead, I allowed myself time over a series of days. And I realized the impact of allowing self-care or personal choice, if you want to call it that, of what I needed, what I wanted over a series of days and how much that influenced how I feel today and how I felt yes. the last couple of days. It was huge. And so for me, it's the understanding that self-care might at some times be a way bigger list and take more time. And other days it may be a bath with bubbles for 20 minutes and I'm good. Mm -hmm. And that it can, it can vary in that. It doesn't have to only be one way. And Cause I just, I got myself caught in this underlying, not really realizing this idea that I had, it had to be a quick fix. Mm -hmm. So I love that. I love yeah. that too. Mm -hmm. How about you, Lisa? What are you feeling? Um, hmm, I like listening to you guys. I felt good. Um, I think what, what really comes up for me is more of like a state of being um, that like you were saying, is, you know, just more like listening to what I need and living in a space within like understanding and, and intuition. Like at least you were saying almost everything that you were applying, like, uh, like really meaningful or intuitively doing it or really grounding it. And so like making these decisions based upon your intuitive knowing, like based upon like really asking yourself and trusting yourself on, on everything. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like when somebody says yoga, well, maybe in the Western belief of yoga, it's like the process of like the movements of yoga, but yoga is actually like a way of life, right? There's so many different facets. So like self-care for me, it's like, not just like a set of movements or a set of doing, I want my self-care with practice to look more like a lifestyle Mm -hmm. So that the choices that I do make, I do make that because they align with me. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like I'll need less of the big events of trying to like bring down my nervous system mm -hmm. and, and getting my hormones balanced again and getting my emotions in check. And I know that it's not going to be perfect, mm -hmm. but it's the practice. And, and okay. One big thing that keeps coming up for me is I've spent almost a lifetime of looking to others to see what I need, getting validations from others and like saying like, is this good for me? Or I'll see the response and be like, oh, I hurt their feelings. Okay. Even though that was my boundary, I'm just going to pull back because it's way uncomfortable to do that. Mm -hmm. And so self-care for me is like, I'm going to take a step back and almost look at me and talk to myself and say, okay, mm -hmm. Lise, it's your turn. What do you need? I'm going to actually listen to you now. I'm going to have your back and, and, and I got you mm -hmm. and, and like, kind of like it's baby steps because mm -hmm. it's not super comfortable, but I need that right now. I need to have my own back right now. And that's mm -hmm. how I'm feeling. That's self-care is like a, mm -hmm. a way of life almost for me. Mm -hmm. I think that's beautiful. And I think too, one way, um, 
like what you were saying and asking yourself, like, what do you need? And sometimes people will say they don't know. They're like, I don't know, like what I guess I could. And they try to think it through. But what I would encourage people to do is when you're trying to think it through is ask yourself the thought based questions, but then see what does your body tell you in response? Mm -hmm. Does that thought make you feel like, yeah, oh God, that feels peaceful. Right. Or does that thought make you feel like, "Mm, nope, 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 not going to, not going to fit. Like let your body talk to you to bring those answers through. If you can't just find them yourself. That's been coming up a lot with, with clients too. Almost every single conversation has been Mm -hmm. like, okay, let's try getting back into our bodies. Let's try getting back into our, our own way of like knowing deep knowing and, Mm -hmm. and like helping them guide through of what it actually feels like when there's a yes or a no in our body rather than Mm -hmm. up here. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Lisa, your point around we often look kind of outside of ourselves. And I think that is challenging sometimes when, you know, we hear, you know, there's lists you can Google like self-care ideas Um, and and going back to that, like really anything can be self-care depending on the intention behind it. And I remember one of the biggest kind of lessons I had in this was, um, in my first round of like myself, my uh, self-employment and doing my taxes. And it just gave me a lot of anxiety and I was putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And I remember there was this one night I couldn't get it out of my head. And I was like, you know what? It was 8 PM. And I'm like, I just, everything in me is saying to do this right now. And I worked through it. it, took me like an hour and a half, couple hours and I was done. And afterwards I felt this like oh my gosh, I can take a breath. And I remember thinking in that moment, who would have thought that doing your taxes would be self-care? But for me, it was something that was weighing so heavily on me and it was creating anxious thoughts and all of these things. Mm. And to just sit down with a tea in my cozy office and it was dark and work through it and get it done. The amount of relief and peace that I felt, I went to bed, I had a great sleep. And so, yeah, like I think at the end of the day, anyone can spout off ideas of self-care, but if we don't connect back to what is true for us in that moment, what's truly going to support us, um, it's probably not going to do what we're intending it to do. Um, And I think, yeah, at the end of the day, it can just, it can't come back to anything. And Mm -hmm. the way to find those anythings is to connect to ourselves and what our bodies need and what our spirit needs. Um, Mm -hmm in that moment. You know, what's funny is yesterday, my act of self care yesterday shocked me, shocked my kids and my husband and my workout partner. So I'm not one that usually likes to go for runs. Um, because for the longest time I couldn't, when I was super anemic, I just, it was the worst experience ever. And the last little while I've been noticing, sometimes I have this draw to want to go for a run and I'm like, wait a minute, what? Like that makes no sense. Normally I'd rather dance or do something else. So yesterday I was like, I want to go for a run. My kids are like, what? You, you, you mean go for a walk, right? And I'm like, no, run. They're like, oh. Um, and so I went for a run and I ran the pace I felt like for however long I felt like. And then when I was done, I was just done. And I put no parameters on how it should be, for how long it should be, at what heart rate and all the stuff that I know Uh, from education of, you know, the proper everything, I did it. And I just self cared my desire to run. And then after I felt super tired, I did my workout, I felt more exhausted, but I felt so happy in that moment to be that exhausted, because I was able to choose to work my body that way. Mm. Right. So my self care was like opposite. It wasn't like, Oh, peace and relaxation and whatever. It was like, let's push ourselves really hard so we can feel really tired after. And there's going to be a beautiful satisfaction in it. As you were talking, I had this like, uh, isn't it funny how our conscious evolution in many ways has led us away from ourselves in that the smarter we get, the more science we have, the more we know, da, 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 da. That's great and can serve in so many ways. And we've also allowed it to take us away from what we need. So like, great, you can know science wise, the best VO2 max and like all these things to make your performance as a runner, if that's your job or whatever, the best it can be. And yet through that consciousness and that knowing and evolution of us as humans, we've also allowed it to detract us from like, okay, but that doesn't matter. I just want to run. Mm -hmm. I just want to go and enjoy my running. Um, 
yeah. and when to step back yeah. when your body's saying, actually, no, this isn't serving me. Mm-hmm. And you're like, yeah. no, but I've trained for six years to do this and this and this. And your body's like, it's not serving me and mm-hmm. we're not listening. And then all of a sudden poof, goes a knee or like, you know, like, and that, I, I don't mean this to sound insensitive, but mm-hmm. if, if we do make sure that we're incorporating really what our bodies are telling us to, mm-hmm. it doesn't, it's, it's doesn't have to be such a struggle, you know? Oh, yeah. I have like, I have run more in the last couple months than I have in the last several years by simply only doing it when I feel like it and mm-hmm. for however long I want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and of course it's different if you're training for an event, totally different ball game here. We're talking self-care, but like in this case, um, self-care can be anything. So it, like, that's why I think it's important. We really encourage the idea of it can be anything. It doesn't have to be the traditional practices right. of meditation or yoga mm-hmm. and it can be though right like it can literally be anything self-care can be painting a wall in your house because you wanted to change the color to something that totally. inspires you mm-hmm. totally that's self-care mm-hmm. so. and then it can evolve as time goes on and as you evolve mm-hmm. I used to mm-hmm. love working out first thing in the morning it was like my favorite time to move my body mm-hmm. no <laughs> not <laughs> anymore it's like literally I want quiet mornings with coffee and snuggles with my dogs and you know, maybe reading or journaling or spending a little time on my phone, just having like a quiet space. Um, I don't want to work out anymore in the morning. But that's your, that's your knowing, right? Yeah. That's you following that's healthcare. I mean, healthcare, that's self-care in, in, yeah. in itself, right? Yeah. You're listening to yourself. That's the intention behind it. And I think like, at least you keep saying the intention behind things and, oh my gosh, is that ever resonating? It's mm-hmm. sometimes you don't have all the answers. But if you hold the intention true with anything, so if you're like trying to look for the ultimate job or your next step in something, it's like maybe the the logics aren't there yet. But if you hold your intentions true, it's like, I want freedom because that's one of my biggest things. I want to feel the freedom of things. I want to feel connection to other people and myself. I want to have... Um, a, a good time at home with my kids, or like whatever the intention might be. I, I need to work with plants or, and holding those intentions, just that intention, those knowings true mm-hmm. and just believing them. It's like, that is my reality. That is my reality. Mm-hmm. Then it's a beautiful way to manifest, right? Because then you're not closing the lid by saying, this is the job I want. Mm-hmm. It's go into your intentions and your feelings and your inner knowings first live it like it's true and then see what prevails Mm -hmm. absolutely I think that's fantastic Mm -hmm. I think this has been some really good stuff ladies that we pulled together today that just kind of you know came through uh without really knowing where we were going and I love that that spirit of help kind of bring in these uh thoughts and ideas for the week for people to ponder and for us to ponder because I mean we get so much out of these conversations as well which is why we wanted to share them um do you guys have any other kind of thoughts or things in closing that you want to share ideas um you know Lisa something that you just said and I I almost wonder if this is like a further exploration for us as a group is just how you know truly connected oftentimes we talk about all of these uh aspects of life as separate and it's such a beautiful reminder of like when we practice self-care things, when we do things that are in tune with ourselves, we're automatically or starting to at least put ourselves in a space of being connected with who we are and what we want um, and what truly is going to fill our (laughs) cup. Um, But then that ultimately leads you to an energy and a space and a way of being that then you can create more of what you want in your life. So that like interconnectedness of self-care and manifestation and how we interact with others in the world, I just think is such a beautiful um, way to end. Cause I think it, I think there's just more to come with that. And I think as we see the shifts and the changes going back to the eye of the storm and more to come, those types of rem- knowings and rememberings and facilitating that connection between all parts of ourselves and all parts of people and consciousness I think is going to be so important. Um, mm-hmm. I love that that's what came up for you at the end. Cause that just feels like, yes, there's like the bow on it. <laughs> right. And I think that 
everybody listening then can kind of like ponder that a little bit. Like what does self-care look like to you or what are old beliefs of self-care? What blocks have you had in the past about self-care? And maybe it's more like um, removing the pressure of what it has to look like versus self-care is just like, just practice going in and just feeling things out a bit, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think that's great. Awesome. And then we can come back next week and talk all about how that felt this week. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Absolutely. Well, okay. Well, I think we'll leave it there then ladies. I think this was great. And thank you so much for sharing your stories and um, yeah, we'll be back again next week. You, for everyone that's watching, you guys can reach us on uh, avalonspirit.com. We're all on there. And if you're enjoying this content, do share and subscribe and like, there'll be so much more to come. And uh, we will see you guys all next week on Spirit Coffee Talk. Have a good week. Bye.